Okay, hello, this is Dr. Jeff Hanna at Atlas Health Australia in North Lakes, the experts in upper cervical chiropractic care for Brisbane. What I'm gonna talk about today is what happens when you fall down on your butt. Okay, it's a rather crude way of putting it, but everybody knows what I'm talking about. In Canada, where I was, where I grew up, we traditionally think of the figure skater, somebody who's, or the hockey player, somebody who's skating around and slips on the ice and falls right on their tailbone, right on that spot right there or on a bony parts right here. It can bruise, it can be sore, it can be any number of things. Now I know of course we don't have the same kind of ice here in Queensland, but I think everybody knows what I'm talking about, this kind of fall and any number of different ways that it can happen. Now a lot of times what people will think, okay, well this is the, the problem is and this is where I've injured. Well, partially yes, if you bruise a bone, bone takes a really long time to heal. It can take, if you bruise it, several weeks if not several months before the swelling of what's called periosteum, the connective tissue around the bone, actually settles down. So it can be really, really uncomfortable. But what it also does is it has an effect on the entire spine. I'm going to use this here to demonstrate, to illustrate. If a person slips and falls on their, their tailbone just like this, the force just does not stop here. It creates a ripple or a whiplash effect that goes through the entire spine as a unit. Now, all of the joints of the spine from L5 up to C3 have interlocking facets. And what this means is that they can only move so far and they typically will move as a unit. And this is why if a person, for example, pushes down in the middle of somebody's back or up between the shoulder blades, you can usually hear several clicks as opposed to just one because they move as a unit. Now, if there is an injury down here, what that can do is create stress as all these move as a unit. But when you get up to the level of the C1 and the C2, they are arranged differently. And so this whiplash and this ripple effect can cause the C1 and the C2 to misalign to a much greater extent than other areas of the spine. See, the C1 and the C2, they do not have the same kinds of interlocking joints. And the C1, in fact, moves like a gyroscope in 360 degrees of movement between the skull and between the C2. It's what gives us all of this movement and what gives us about 50% of this movement through the neck and the spine. So the rest of the spine is for structure and stability. This area here, even though it allows for movement, is the one that is most susceptible to injury. So it doesn't always take a head, a neck, or a shoulder injury to affect the upper part of the neck that's going to affect the brainstem itself. You can have an injury right down at the lower back, and that is going to have an effect and actually cause these things to go out. So very often people will say, oh, but I just had a, a fall. I, I thought I hurt my back or I thought I hurt my hip or I hurt my knee. There was a jar, but I didn't hurt my head or my neck. Well, what I'm saying is that this whip effect can actually have a very profound impact up at the top. Not every injury is gonna cause something like this to misalign or to subluxate, but it just takes that one that can create then a whole host of other issues and sometimes things that you may not ever think associated with that kind of an injury. So I hope that you've enjoyed this little video here. As always, number one, if you found it informative, if you've enjoyed it, please like this video on Facebook, on YouTube. And number two, if you've been listening to this and thinking, you know, there's somebody else who really needs to hear that, or really needs to hear that, please share this video, share this message with them. Thank you very much. This is Jeff Hanna at Atlas Health Australia, restoring the cause of health from above down, inside out.